Welcome. Welcome to the Rick Helps Real Estate Show. Are we going to see more listings coming on board as we head into summer here in the Arizona real estate market, particularly in the Phoenix area? We aren't yet. So let's take a look at some of the numbers. Now, some parts of the country are seeing kind of a surge in new inventory that's coming up like Seattle, Tacoma, Austin, Texas, and Florida. But I'm not seeing it here yet. And I don't know if we're going to see it. So I want to take a look at it because it's the you know, people are waiting for it. They're waiting for a month of supply to grow. They're waiting for more choices. They're waiting for interest rates to drop. They're waiting for everything to crash. So let's take a look. So if we look here, this is where we're at now today. And I've been kind of saying I'm expecting things to flatten out. And I got lucky. But I only got lucky because it's a lead up to a holiday week, to Memorial Day. So we did indeed flatten out right here. So we have 16,624. We only went down by two listings. That's how tight and stable this market is. Now, if you just look at seasonal trends, you have to ignore this. You have to ignore 2022 because this is when rates went flying up. So I'm going to take that date out here in just a moment. So let's just take a look at the when we didn't have the rate shock. You got a year here in 2023 where inventory was going down. Then it started going up towards the end of the year. You had 2020, which again, unfortunately, those are numbers you really can't depend on. I mean, nothing was like 2020, but inventory started going down <coughs> because money was free and people started buying like crazy. Uh, 2021, the rest of the year was short. I mean, flat with really lame inventory numbers. So from a historical perspective, we really don't have anything to look at. Now, how far back can I go? I can only go back to 2020 on this chart. I'd like to see what 2019 looks like on the Cromford market uh, data here, but on that particular chart, they don't go back that far. Now, that's where existing inventory is going. When I look on my seven-day moving average here, I see kind of a little bit of a different story. I see that our new listings have come down again, leading up Memorial Day weekend, one of the slowest real estate weekends in the Valley. If you had an open house over the weekend and your agent said it was really slow, well, duh. <laughs> Memorial Day doesn't pack them in. The best day for an open house is the Friday after Thanksgiving. Memorial Day, 4th of July, forget it. People are not out looking for homes. Now, our new contracts dip down, new listings dip down, but the difference between the two, the contract rate has gone up to 80%. That's a healthy market. That's not one that says you're going to see inventory spiking up. And we can look at it another way too, at listings under contract here, and you can see that they dipped slightly from 83.44 to 82.52. Not alarming. We've only gone down, here's a peak here of 84.97. So we've gone down about 150 homes. That's not enough to throw a large jump in listings in our, in our market. Listing success rate. Now, when you look at listing success rate, which I'm going to pull up, that's lagging. So those were homes that closed today that were listed 30 to 45 days ago. And here's where we're at. So the success rate went up. February down in March and it's tracking May as 77%. Again, relatively healthy. If you look at it historically, 77% is kind of right in that mid range where we've been before. You get down here in the crash, nobody was selling homes. So that's what we were looking at back in those years. Then the months of supply which is still hanging at 2.4. And I posed the question earlier in the week and said, wow, what would people feel like if we got up to four to six months of inventory? Because that's always been shown as normal. About 27,000 homes in our market. That's pre-population gain, if that makes sense. 27,000 homes listed before we had this huge jump in population. If we had a four-month supply right now, I think people would think the wheels fell off the wagon. I don't think we'd view it as normal. You're already hearing people say, 
wow, there's a lot of homes for sale on my street. What, two? <laughs> there just aren't yet, folks. There are in certain areas. Now, Chandler's starting to slip a little bit. When you look at the CPI, uh, they're pulling back this week. Uh, they're pulling back because their inventory has crept up just a little bit. Paradise Valley is going to take them over his top spot. Gilbert's pulled back a little bit. So when it comes to that index of supply and demand, it's definitely going this way. But ever, ever so slowly, our market is rate driven. And this is where interest rates are. You can see here that, you know, we did have that big spike up here. And now we just had a little bit of a dip here after seeing rates go up to about 7.8. And they're sitting at a survey here of about 7.16. So is that going to change? That's what everybody's waiting for. And if you look at the federal funds rate, that's the overnight rate, what everybody watches, you can see what their strategy is. Up, 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 hold. They're waiting. Waiting for the CPI data to come in. They want to get closer to 2%. They want to see that the momentum is getting to 2%. The bond traders have finally, finally relented to where they said, Okay, you were right. Uh, looks like you are going to stay here longer, uh, higher for longer. We didn't believe you initially. That's why we pulled rates down. But now we're, uh, okay, Chairman Powell, we believe you. And rates have uh, crept up just a little bit, not by much, maybe an eighth of a point. Uh, but that's where we're sitting here in May. And the next opportunity for the feds to come in and say, okay, we're going to cut is June. The bond traders are betting that they're probably not going to cut. We're expecting some CPI data to come in pretty soon. And the chatter that's out there is they're expecting it to be favorable. In other words, it's going to look uh, better than it has the past couple of months. I don't think that's going to be enough for the central bank to say, okay, we're off to the races. Let's go. Let's cut based on everything they've been saying. I don't think that's going to happen. And they're facing this on the back end of Europe cutting their rates. European central banks ready to start cutting interest rates, said a chief economist. So if Europe cuts interest rates, are we going to be right behind them? Interest rates are a very complicated mechanism in our market. And uh, who knows, but you got all these moving pieces. Now, the higher our interest rates up, the more interest we have on our debt as a country. That's another thing that they're looking at. And that's getting pretty darn ugly. We can sit there and stroll through that for the next 10, 20 years. It'll be talked about, and nobody, I doubt, will do anything about it. The other thing we're looking at here is this is from Redfin, the top 10 areas move, people are moving to. Check and see who's number one here. Phoenix, our net inflow from February to April is 6,200 people. Where are they coming from? They're coming from Washington, not surprisingly, California, Illinois, why Colorado. That's interesting. More than 1,000 people were searching to move out of Colorado state versus moving into the state. That's what these numbers are. They're search numbers. Doesn't necessarily mean they've moved, uh, but here are the ones that down here that shows that they, they have moved into Phoenix. And it shows you where they're coming from. Isn't that interesting? When you really, when you think about it, Chicago makes sense. A lot of people are here from Chicago, Seattle, Portland. Come down here, nicer weather. Kind of surprising that more than 1,400 people are searching to move from Phoenix from Dallas. Probably real estate taxes are driving that and jobs. Real estate taxes in Dallas are really expensive. Now, I don't think they have a state income tax, so you got to weigh that too. We have a lot of people coming here from the San Francisco area and, of course, Los Angeles and San Diego. But it looks like the most are coming from Seattle. So when you look at our inventory and people are moving here, that probably has to slow down a little bit before you see inventory start to climb. So the things that make inventory going to go up are lack of sales. And we're kind of at record lows. We're going between 2,200 and 3,200 every seven days. So that has to go down more or new listings have to go up. New listings have just kind of remained flat the past couple of months. Now, are people going to put their homes on the market as we get into summer? Because school's going to start at the end of July. People are going to be making that move. Let's see what happens if they put their homes on the market. 
they get gobbled up, then nope, new listings are not going to climb. And so I think, and it's just a guess here based on what I'm looking at, I think it's going to be more of the same throughout the entire summer. The fall, whole different animal. You've got a couple opportunities for something to happen in with mortgage rates between now and fall, and it's a mortgage driven market right now. So we'll continue to watch it, see what happens. I hope that helps. Any questions, shoot me an email at rick at rickhelps.com. Take care.